Okay, one thing I like doing in my spare time is hiking. So as you know, um, when I hike, you know, I always like to bring lunch with me. My grandma packs my lunch box with me. Um, and then what I do is I just climb the mountain and then I don't stop till I reach the top. And then I grab my lunch and enjoy my reward. So that's the only break I get. I don't stop until I complete the task that I'm willing to do. Likewise for a red-tailed hawk. Um, when I decide to go into falconry, which I will, I'm gonna pack a lunch just like I would when I go hiking and then eventually I'm gonna get a break. But the only break that you're ever gonna get in falconry is when your hawk catches its meal. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna eat my lunch with my red-tailed hawk. As strange as it sounds, I don't eat unless my hawk eats. I watched this movie called The Hawk is Dying and there's a line that actually he mentions that while he's in the car. And he kind of mentions that his hawk is starving because he's trying desperately to train his hawk, but he just can't seem to train it. And so he spends 24 seven with his hawk for several days until the hawk finally listens to him. And he manages to feed the hawk from his hand. Yes, he feeds the kid bits, he feeds it the that animal, there's an animal that, that he feeds to it. And it's great. It's a great feeling when you finally did your accomplishment to get this hawk to be trained. And I I want to prove their livelihood. That's what I want to do. The reason why I would want to train a red-tailed hawk is that they can hunt better. So that they can be able to live their lives without worrying about, you know, starving in the winter or whatever. The sad truth is 50% off of 50% of all hawks die after their first migration. It's a very sad statistic. I don't want my red-tailed hawk to be that next statistic. So that's why I have to work really hard to make sure I train it. And I'm going to eat my lunch when my red-tailed hawk eats his lunch. So I have something in my pocket. Viewer discretion is advised, by the way. By the way, I don't have a live rat. So I'm going to give you the closest thing. A stuffed rat. This is actually... Um, one of the cats, rats that they play with. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. So I got my red-tailed hawk right here. I know you're just so anxious to eat right now. <laughs> I just can't. I just can't help myself. And there's. Okay, so here's the thing. So let's just say it's on the grass. I need some space here. All right, so. So here's the grass. I mean, it's not the grass, but it's close enough to the grass, I guess. And it's eating this rat, okay? And it's eating this rat. Okay, so you can see it right there eating its rat, okay? It's pecking at it or whatever. So it's just like that. All right, so. Oh, you're gonna see me in the video, all right. So I'm gonna be, let me zoom it out so you can really see it. So you can really see what I'm going to do. I'm gonna be laying down. This is how close I want to be when it starts feeding on its rat or whatever other animal that it's eating.
Yes, I'll be actually right behind the red tail of a hawk. I'll be right behind its tail. And don't ask me why, because if I said it, I'd probably have to put an 18 plus rating on this video. All right, so. All right, so as you can see, this, this is the hawk. Hopefully it's still, hopefully it's still eating its prey when I come within inches away from it. And of course, most importantly, as I'm right here, you know, as I'm, as I'm right here, <laughs> 